Well, rocks is my pillow. Cold ground is my bed. Highway is my home. So I might as well be dead. I'm walking and walking. Seems this road don't have no end. Well, in a mean old world, I don't even have a friend. That's a hard blow. Just a generation ago, when you wanted to hear the blues, you went to West Oakland. Well, a long train call, come on around the curve. Well, that long train's a-coming, coming on around that curve. I'll get on board, take a trip around the world. All along 7th Street, different now, but once a stretch of small clubs, belting blues night after night. Further north, there was Richmond, where the crowds were rougher and the music was raw and country. Most of the old clubs are gone now. They died as the music faded in popularity. But blues music didn't die. You can still find it in Oakland, if you know where to look. I was in love with you, baby. Before I learned to call your name. I was in love with you, baby. Before I learned to call your name. Well, you're so good looking, baby, and you build up from the ground. Well, you're so good looking, baby, and you build up from the ground. And every time I see you, baby, you make my love come tumbling down. Well, you're just my type, baby. There's a lot of local blues musicians here in Oakland. And I mean, they tough. I mean, they good. People just don't even know about them. Don't even know they exist. <laughs> used to have clubs in Oakland like the Sportsman, you know, owned by Mr. Don Boxdale. Also the, uh, what's that one on uh, Telegraph? 
Yeah, and the showcase and uh, they, huh? Many lose. Yeah, many lose right here in Richmond, which uh, we're not far from there. It's right across the track. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kennedy's yeah, Kennedy's the Long Island in San Francisco is quite a bunch of them, you know. And so we had, oh man, you you, you wouldn't have time enough to play them all, you know. He playing some of them clubs you couldn't get in the door. It'd be just that crowd. It'd be all outside trying to listen to him, him, him play. You know, it was just, people just was having a good time. They would stand out there in the rain. I've seen people stand in the rain at, at the Savoy trying to get in there, and then they, they was in there just packed. You, you, you couldn't get in there. And it was that time, it was sloppy and muddy around there. They'd be in the mud trying to get inside to hear him play. No sidewalk. No, no, nothing. <laughs> you got some good yeah. shoes on, you better wear boots, and then put your shoes know. on when you get in the inside. They keep from getting the shoes muddy. You and this place would hold in. about 500 people. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'd be playing. I'd take off my hat and lay it down, and I'd look at it, it'd be full. And I'd take it and do it like this so I wouldn't waste nothing. <laughs> put it back. Hey, well, hat full of money, I wouldn't put nothing in my pocket. Put it back, I put my hat back on my hand. <laughs> Blues came to Oakland during World War II, when thousands of blacks moved from the South to the East Bay, bringing their music with them. Their destination? The wartime shipyards. People like was getting a dollar, two dollars a day. In my hometown, other cities in the South, they come out here, they got five dollars. Some depends on their qualification, got ten dollars. I got uh, uh, what I what did I what did I make out there? I made uh, during that time. That was 1947, six or seven like that. I made uh, two dollars and fifty cents an hour, and that was good dust. You ever seen an ant hill? Ants. They move, everybody cares, every little ant carries his own little load with him for his survival. That's what it was like. That's a parable. Everybody was busy. And the business pulled in the people. In Richmond alone, the black population rose from 270 in 1940 to over 13,000 in 1947. It was like the migration that brought blues to Chicago during the First World War. But where Chicago attracted people from Mississippi and Tennessee, most of the migrants to Oakland were from Louisiana and Texas. And inevitably, that means a fair proportion of uh, blues singers amongst them. Even if it's only 1%, that's going to be a lot. You know, and even if it's um, 0.01, it's still going to be a lot. So uh, I think that the, the music just moved across with them. And quite a number of the earlier singers in, uh, recorded on the West Coast were of Texas origin. The blue? <laughs> what is the blue? Well, maybe different people got different opinion of the blue, but my feeling of the blue 
is when you're all down and out and you're a woman or something treated you wrong and the next day he just got that certain feeling low down his feeling and I call that and it and it lagers and lingers on your mind so I figured that's the blues on your mind. Bob Geddens, the man who first put Oakland blues on wax. Born in Texas, he moved to Oakland in 1942. Recorder, songwriter, producer, he gave to the blues a distinctive Oakland sound. It was no blues in Oakland when I came here. Then when I started the blues to go in here, I think they just give it the name the Oakland blues. But it's not much very different from any of the blues, only it's got a slow, a dry year beat and a kind of mournful sound. hard man. You had to sing the blues just right to satisfy him. And he taught me how to phrase the blues. Really. The man, not being a singer, a musician, <laughs> but he had uh, some air. He had a, a beautiful air of understanding how to phrase the blues. Uh, like I would say, I don't know. He said, no. He said, say it like this. I don't know. Emphasize it. Some people are born with sound in their ear. They don't have to know, you know, not a not an inkling of music. It's all a feel. And this is what he had. You know, he couldn't read A flat from B flat, but he could <laughs> he could feel and he could hear. He had a very keen ear. And you couldn't fool him for nothing in the world. You know, if you try to say, well, no, uh, uh, Gettings, I don't want that there. I want to know if you saw. And he had that draw. Oh, no, don't play that. You know what I mean? Really down, down home, dude. But he knew what he wanted. And he come across with it. The marriage of Gettings' ear and Oakland's talent gave birth to a number of fine blues artists during the late 40s and early 50s. Among them, Jimmy McCracklin, Lafayette Thomas, L.C. Robinson, Lowell Fulsom, Jimmy Wilson, Johnny Fuller, Johnny Hartsman, Sugar Pie DeSanto. I think that Bob Geddes was California's answer to contemporary blues when he got started in Oakland uh, back in the 40s. But if it wasn't for Bob Giddings, uh, I don't think any of these people would have been found. And thanks to him that uh, we have enough blues to keep ourselves going because all these people, some of them are still around us. Bob probably has made, since I've known him, uh, he's probably been responsible for making over four or five million dollars in the, this area, you know. I'm not saying that all that came to him, but he was responsible for generating that much money. Altogether, Geddens owned three Oakland studios and seven record labels, but he never made much money. The successful artists he recorded often left him for the bigger companies in Chicago and Los Angeles, and lack of capital forced him to sell the rights to many of his master recordings. I got cheated out of so much money. You know, 
the big companies, they would take up my stuff and uh, they would give me a fair account and uh, they just keep me with enough money to not to have enough money to really go into big business. Gaddin's work as a full-time blues producer stopped in the early 60s. Today, he runs a radiator shop in East Oakland. I got a new car. I got a new car. I got a new car. But I'm as broke as I can be. By the late 50s, the Oakland blues were changing. The era of the Gaddin sound waned as new styles developed. And what little money I do run the cross. I go in my gas tank and out my exhaust. I got, got a new car. car. You heard me now, boy. I got, got a new car. car. I got, got a new car. car. But I'm as broke as I can be. And ever since I wrote on that little black dotted line, is that for real? I haven't been able to sufficiently dine. I heard that, man. Two pieces of soup ain't much of a meal. Three hundred and forty-four dollars a month ain't much of a deal. I got a new car. You heard me that time. I got, got a new car. car. Surprise me that time, baby. I got I'm a new car, car. but I'm as broke as I can be. Well, you know, Jay, they're coming to take my pretty car back. Why? Well, my old lady tried to tell me not to get a brand new Cadillac. Did she tell you that, man? Next time I buy a car, I'm going to buy one I can afford. What do you mean by that? When I say afford, mm. I mean afford. Got a new car. I got a new car. I got a new car. But I'm as broke as I can be. Most people's... Uh, when they say blues, the first thing going to their head, well, blues is a downer. To me, blues is not a downer, it's an upper. Because if you got the blues, you talk about it, get it off your chest, you feel much better. But if you keep it on the inside, the more you think about it, the deeper it's gonna get within. But if you talk about it, uh, sing it out, then, you got up or you feel good. I do. I By the mid-60s, blues was no longer the mainstream of urban black culture in Oakland or any place else. But at the same time, white audiences were discovering the blues and white musicians began playing the blues. Some people will tell you that this destroyed the music, and others would tell you that it saved it. That's funny you brought that up just like that because just like now, see? You're talking to me, you're filming me, although I know that the club brought you here, you know, and I happen to be white and have it, look. But this, but this happened before, and I say, I say to the people like I'm saying to you, what are you coming to me? And talk about the blues, you know. Come to a white man and talk about blues. All I can tell you is, 
it's, it's how I come into it and how I like it. But I can't, uh, <coughs> excuse me, anything I say about it is just my own feelings and how I feel and where, I'm, where I come from. But I think if you really was going to talk to somebody about some blues, you better talk to a black man that plays the blues, you know. Now, tell you who brought the blues back. Now, I don't know whether this uh, help or hurt, but I want, I'd like for listen to this. The white youngsters brought the blues back because they went to singing our songs. Stand? And it was making hits off of them. But by the late 60s, white interest in blues declined. And in the early 70s, Oakland blues hit its lowest point. Then in 1973 came the first of the annual San Francisco Blues Festivals. Local artists shared the stage with blues players from across the country. And local interest in the blues began a slow revival. Today in Oakland and Richmond, the bluesmen continue to perform in a handful of small clubs. Blues doesn't bring money or fame to most musicians, but for any bluesman it does offer this a chance to put his life into music. To be a blues man and to write the blues, you have to have lived it, you have to have understand it, uh, you have to be able to synthesize with someone who has the blues, you know. Uh, then, from those experiences, you can take them and you can write about them. And as you can see, the surroundings that I live in, uh, it is easy for me to write about the blues. Uh, I love the woman But she got cancer from smoking cigarettes I love the woman But she got cancer from smoking cigarettes Tried my best to discourage her, but she never heard a word I said. When I lived in Fresno, there was a young lady down there who I cared very much about uh, that smoked a consistent amount of cigarettes. And she had uh, done it with res reckless abandon. And I used to tell her all the time, you know, that I wish you wouldn't smoke as many cigarettes as you smoke, because one day it's going to be real bad for you. Uh, she always told me that she was going to quit, but she never did quit. It's a, she seemed to have gotten worse. And as a result of it, uh, she got cancer from smoking cigarettes and died. She woke up one morning coughing. Then she thought she had a cold. After years of smoking cigarettes, love, love was about to fall. When you are a blues musician, something is adapted to you, like a disease, uncurable disease. And it's something that you just have to stay with, just like this disease is going to stay with you. And as it is a disease, it's just like being an alcoholic. Once you take a drink, you're just going to want more and more and more until you are completely drunk. Now my brother in Korea, baby. Lord and my sister, down in New Orleans. in my 
my sister, my sister's down in New Orleans. I'm having so much trouble, woman. I wonder what it was gonna happen to me. Sweet sixteen, baby. something it's a poor man that pushes his hand forward and draw it back so soon you've got to know what the outcome is going to be and I believe a man that starts out to do something and gives up on his own will never know what the outcome of anything going to be I am one that I wants to know if I go down dying with it I want to know Were you have mercy when the blues got me from my head down to my natural feet where were you good looking woman i said when the blues got me from my head down to my natural feet you baby a day the ravens did that dance in the street 